this is actually my second time of recording this video and I actually put the original video live. Some of you may have even seen it. And having watched it back, whilst I agreed with most of my own sentiments, I did think that I missed a few key points. So I want to talk today about the police. I want to talk about police officers and the so-called two-tier policing system and how many genuine police officers may actually be victims of what we are now seeing on the streets of the UK. I've reported a couple of different instances where people have been given massively disproportionate sentences, in my opinion, off the back of what I would consider to be fairly minor misdemeanours. In one instance, someone was simply reposting Facebook images, and in another, someone was shouting abuse at the police, of course, not to be condoned, and waggling their finger in an aggressive way. We saw these people with custodial sentences, and I did say that these people were clearly the victim of a two-tier policing system, particularly considering what we saw going on in Leeds, where there were armed gangs of men from a certain faction roaming the streets looking for people to attack. However, I believe there are a significant number of police officers who have also become victims of this movement. Sorry to interrupt the video, just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who supports the channel. If you haven't done so already, then I do ask that you kindly click the subscribe button down below. 97% of people who watch these videos aren't currently subscribed, which is crazy, right? It's totally free. You can change your mind and there won't be any hard feelings if you choose to unsubscribe at a later date. If you do find these videos useful and you want to help me out, you can buy me a beer by clicking the link in the description below. And that also would be very much appreciated, particularly in this hot weather. Anyway, back to the video. Of course, there are the more obvious victims, those that have been injured in clashes with people at these protests and at these so-called riots. But also there are the lesser known victims, those who are putting their boots on the street every day trying to do the best job they can. Now, in the original video, I did speak specifically about these hardworking so-called bobbies on the beat, the people on the front line who want to go out there, do a great job and keep us safe. And I have absolutely no doubt there is an awful lot of them. What maybe I didn't acknowledge is that they are, as there probably is in any job or any role, people who are quite happy to play the victim, people who are quite happy to shirk responsibility and take the path of least resistance but I still maintain that there are probably the majority of police officers frontline police officers who got into the job for the right reasons it's certainly not the best paying job and it's not the sort of thing you'd get into just because you need something to keep a roof over your head so it's fairly safe to assume then that the majority of people who get into the police do it because it is a vocation it is something that they want to do and I can only suggest that in most instances, that's going to be with the best of intentions. They're going to want to protect their communities. They're going to want to be putting bad guys behind bars. Whilst I don't believe that acting on instruction is always an excuse for two-tiered behaviour or for the actions of officers on the front line, it is fairly safe to say that a lot of the agendas we have seen, particularly the liberal agendas, particularly those where far-right protesters are certainly policed more heavy-handedly than those on the left, a lot of this, I believe, comes from above. It's also, I think, important to consider that a lot of police officers are working class British people, just like the people that they are sent out to so-called police. When we've seen these protests from the supposed far-right thugs, whilst there are thugs amongst their ranks, are, by and large, just frustrated British working class people, it is important to consider that most of the police officers are also working class British people, who may very well be frustrated and angered by the same issues as the people they have found themselves up against. It's important also to mention that by British police officers, I don't mean white Anglo-Saxon men. There are plenty of hard-working British police officers who want to protect the public, who want to protect their communities, who come from a diverse range of ethnic and social backgrounds. Being British doesn't mean you are white Anglo-Saxon. Being British means being part of the society of the country that you live in. And if your intentions are pure, then there's surely nothing more British than putting yourself on the line, be that in the police or in the armed forces, to protect the country you live in. Irregardless of your background, if you join the police with pure intentions and the intentions of carrying out the job to your best abilities, then that makes you, in my opinion, truly British. Like I say, however, there will always be bad apples. There will always be bad actors and there will always be people who shirk their responsibilities or are very happy to plead the victim in order for an easy life. Dare I suggest that during the most recent protests and riots, police officers may have been encouraged to come forward with reports of any insulting language or any aggression towards them from certain far-right or supposed far-right factions in order to further perpetuate the narrative that the far-right are indeed the biggest threat in these situations. 
And I'm sure in many instances, people are happy to go along with this. In the same way that we have seen officers dancing at pride parades and taking the knee in front of Black Lives Matter protesters. These officers, again, may have been under instruction from the powers that be to do their best to integrate with the crowd. So maybe dancing the Macarena at a pride parade or taking the knee in front of thousands of BLM protesters was deemed to be the correct action and fed down to the officers on the street. If this, however, was a personal choice on behalf of the officers who have been sent there to control the crowds, then that is certainly on them. If you are one of the, I believe, many police officers who do the job for the right reasons because you want to protect the public and you want to lock up the bad guys, then I feel it must be an incredibly thankless task and in many instances incredibly disheartening to see the outcome of your labours. You want to be locking up bad guys, yet you're sent to go and heavily handedly police a otherwise peaceful protest. You want to lock up bad guys, yet you see some gang members being given suspended sentences and in some instances no sentence at all, whilst you see those who are arrested for minor crimes given custodial time behind bars. You then read in the media and see on the news that you're being described as two-tier police. You are being accused of carrying out your duties in an unfair way. You face disdain from many frustrated members of the public and in many instances you are hated by members of the public who have lost faith in the police service. You are beholden to a liberal hierarchy that puts you in positions where you are not able to do your job correctly. The service itself weakened by unnecessary DEI recruitment policies, by liberal agendas and by PC and woke culture. I am not defending the police service. I am certainly not defending the direction in which the police service is going where a number of real crimes are going unsolved and in many, many instances completely uninvestigated. I am not defending the quite clear two-tier policing system and the two-tier judiciary system which you are currently living under in the UK. I'm not defending any of that. What I am defending is what I still hope is the majority of genuine police officers with their boots on the street who want to go out and make this country a safer place for its residents. And they're having their hands tied by a culture within the police service which stops them from doing that. Stay safe and stay sane, everyone.